So by training, I'm a cancer physician, but I stopped giving chemotherapy drugs to patients a long time ago. And what I do is I give patients information about genetic testing, about the advantages and disadvantages of looking for faulty genes in the family. Most patients that I see have either a family history of breast cancer or ovarian cancer or sometimes bowel cancer. They know that relatives in their family have developed these different cancers and they're concerned about whether they themselves may develop these cancers. So I talk to them about the concept that we now know about several of the genes which are involved in breast and ovarian cancer which runs in families. It's technically possible to now identify whether there are faults in some of these genes running in the family. And if we are able to identify a fault in the family, we can then offer testing to other members of the family to see if they have inherited that fault. If I see a lady whose mother developed breast cancer at a young age and there's a faulty gene in the family, the mother has one good copy and one faulty copy of the gene and she passes one copy on to her daughter. So her daughter's at 50% chance of inheriting the good copy from her mother, 50% chance of inheriting the faulty copy. If a lady inherits a good copy from her mother, then she may still develop non-genetic breast cancer, which is, of course, most common. If she inherits the faulty copy from her mother, then she's at increased risk of developing breast and ovarian cancer, but it's not definite. People often think that genetic testing brings certainty, but it doesn't bring certainty. It can bring more information, but that information tends very much to be probability type information. A lot of the people that I see want to discuss the good points and bad points of testing, and then they go off and decide whether they actually wish a test themselves or not. One of the major advantages that we have here in the London Breast Clinic is that we have a team with various different degrees of expertise. So we have clinical oncologists who give radiotherapy, medical oncologists who give drugs, breast surgeons who do the operations, radiologists who look at the imaging, and a wide variety of different disciplines all working as a team. I know that I have the backup of the full team when I give advice and assistance and try and explain the situation to patients. And that is a major benefit for any health professional. None of us can be experts in everything, but it makes a big difference to have a group of experts working together with you. So two of the well-known genes involved in both breast cancer and ovarian cancer are called BRCA1 and BRCA2. That is the name of the gene. It stands for breast cancer 1, but of course the gene is involved in both breast cancer and ovarian cancer. A gene is made up of a long sequence of the letters C, G, A and T. The BRCA1 gene is made up of 100,000 of these letters and a faulty gene is caused by a change of one single letter. So it's a very subtle spelling mistake and it can be anywhere along the whole lineup of the gene. And that means essentially that genetic testing is a two-step process. In the first step, we need to take a blood sample from someone in the family who has either breast cancer or ovarian cancer, work our way along their genetic material, sequence their gene, to see if we can identify the faulty letter. And only if we manage to identify a faulty letter in that lady can we then go on and offer genetic testing in the second step to other people in the family. Because once we've identified the fault in the lady with breast cancer, we can then test our daughter for that specific fault. I think it is inevitable that publicity surrounding Angelina Jolie has had a major impact on people. It is very important to ensure that people have accurate information on their clinical state and that no one goes into testing without properly having the accurate information of what the possible outcomes could be, what the test could possibly show, what they might decide to do about it. Not everyone who decides to have testing will end up having a bilateral prophylactic mastectomy. But they will all be aware that they may be at increased risk of developing breast cancer themselves. So at the moment I tend to see ladies who have a family history of either breast or ovarian cancer and are therefore concerned about it. Up till relatively recently, in ladies with family history of breast cancer, we used to test for the two breast cancer genes I've mentioned. 
if a family came forward with a lot of bowel cancer in the family, we would test them for the bowel cancer genes, and there's several of them. Recently, we do all our testing through Myriad Genetics, and they have introduced a new test into the UK. And in this new test, we are able to look at 25 different cancer genes, all in a single sample. And since this has been introduced, which was the end of last year, it has proven very, very popular. So in fact, now I am seeing more and more families who have various different types of cancer in the family and who wish to consider genetic testing. But I honestly believe this has been a major step forward in inherited ge cancer genetic testing, and I'm delighted to say that it was introduced first into the UK in London and first into the whole of the world outside the States in the UK. So now we're moving away from the concept of inherited genes to the idea that looking at genetic activity in the breast cancer can give very useful information. And we now have a new test called Endopredict, which does exactly that. It looks at genetic activity in the breast cancer and it can tell you whether it's safe to treat that lady with hormone therapy alone or whether that lady should also be offered chemotherapy in addition to the hormone therapy. With the introduction of this new test, we are now in a much better position to be able to accurately say to a patient, listen, it's safe to treat you with hormone therapy alone and therefore you do not need to have chemotherapy. And again, I believe this to be a major advance in the treatment of breast cancer.